All right, in this video, uh, we have a few learning targets. We are going to identify um, when, a sequence is, when a sequence is geometric. Um, we're going to identify the common ratio, or R, for those geometric sequences, and then we're going to use that common ratio to predict the next several terms. We're not going to develop the formula or the rule or the, the function for a geometric sequence in this video. We're just going to kind of explore some properties of geometric sequences. So let's start by determining the difference between these two sequences. Uh, first, this is the type of sequence that you've dealt with most of your life, and this is called an arithmetic sequence. Okay? And the reason it's called an arithmetic sequence is we can see that it has a common difference, and that difference is additive, or you could subtract it, but basically you get to the next term the same way every time, and we call that the common difference. Okay, so that is an arithmetic sequence. That is not the geometric sequences that we're talking about today. Geometric sequences will look like this one right here, and we see that there's still a pattern happening with our sequence, but this time, let's see, let's see if I add three there, well then, it looks like I'm not adding, I'm adding a different number there and a different, so the amount that we're adding every time seems to be changing. So maybe instead of thinking of an additive or a subtraction difference, let's think of multiplication. I know that 3 times 2 gives me 6. 6 times 2 gives me 12. 12 times 2 gives me 24. And 24 times 2 gives me 48. So this multiplicative difference, okay, that is um, what we call our common ratio, okay? And we call it a ratio just because if I were to take, for example, those two terms and do 6 divided by 3, that would give me a 2, right? Well, I could do that same thing with any two terms. I could take these two and do 12 divided by 6 to give me that 2. I could do it again for these two terms and get 24 divided by 12 to give me a 2, so on and so forth. So that's our common ratio. This is called a geometric sequence because it has a common ratio. Okay, now let's go to our next slide where we actually get some formal definitions. This sequence that we're discussing is a geometric sequence because you multiply to get to the next term. In other words, the ratio of consecutive terms is constant. And that ratio is called the common ratio, or R. So once again, um, that ratio just means that 6 over 3 is the same thing as 12 over 6, which is the same thing as 24 over 12, which is the same thing as 48 over 24. These are ratios, and they're all equal. And whatever that simplifies to, is that R value, okay? And in this case, it's 2, because all these up here would simplify to 2. Now, let's see how we can use this in some examples. So for these problems, we're going to find the common ratio. Oops, let me back up. We're going to find the common ratio, and then find the next three terms. So we can see here, you might be able to just eyeball it and identify the pattern. We can see that this is times 5, and then 10 times 5 is 50. So that means your common ratio, or R, is 5. Now, if you couldn't just look at it and identify what that number is, you could uh, do it by dividing consecutive terms. Meaning, if I wasn't able to tell 2 times what gives me 10, I could just do 10 divided by 2, and that would give me that 5. I could do 50 divided by 10, and it would give me that 5. But basically, to get to the next term in each sequence, we're going to multiply by that common ratio of 5. So basically, I would just have to keep that going. I'd do uh, 50 times 5 to find my next term. So 50 times 5 would give me a 250. And then that times 5 would give me a 1250. And then that times 5 would give me a 6250, 
Okay, let's move on to our next one. On this next one, once again, if we can, we're just going to eyeball it and identify what the common ratio is. So negative 2 times what gives me 6? If you weren't sure, you could just divide consecutive terms to find that common ratio. And here we'd find that that common ratio, or r, is 3. Or excuse me, negative 3. And we know it's going to be a negative because the signs in our terms are alternating. So times 3, I should put a times negative 3 and a times negative 3 and a times negative 3. So to find the next three terms, we're just going to take the terms and multiply by that common ratio. 54 times negative 3 would give us a negative 162, and that times negative 3 would give us a 486, and then that times negative 3 would give us a negative 1458. Now on the next one, this is a little bit different because it looks like our terms are decreasing, okay? Here, if I look at it, it looks like we go from 8 to 4 to 2 to 1. So if I couldn't identify that my common ratio here is 1 half, we could get that by dividing consecutive terms. 4 over 8 is 1 half, okay? And so I would just keep multiplying by 1 half. We know that 1 times 1 half is, my next term would be, 1 half, and then 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, and then that third term would be 1 eighth. And then last, I'll be quick with this last one. This kind of combines the ideas from problem 2 and problem 3. Here our common ratio is negative 1 half. And so we can use that to find the next terms. Uh, 9 times negative 1 half would be negative 9 halves, excuse me, positive 9 halves, in other words, 4.5. And our next term after that would be negative 9 fourths, which I think that would be negative 2.25. And then the last one would be a positive 9 eighths. So main ideas from this geometric sequences have a common ratio, meaning that we multiply to get to the next term. If you don't know how to find that common ratio, you can just divide consecutive terms. That's your common ratio. Once you know that common ratio, you can multiply to find the next terms in the sequence.